for this opportunity today. I am a child in this house and I want to say that really we have good shepherds of God. I came from wherever they didn't know where and they just accepted me and even allowed me this altar to serve in. Thank you so much, Mom. I honor you. Please pass my regards to Dad. I also honor the people that serve under them, all our pastors in-house, Pastor Beatrice, Pastor Moshigadi, and every other pastor. God bless you so much. God do you well. <clears throat> I stand here because of the grace and the mercies of God. And every time I think about my life, I... I am reminded of the word of God in the book of, I think, Luke, chapter 7 from verse 36 there, henceforth. The Bible says that there was a sinful woman. Okay. The Bible says there was a sinful woman. And what happened to this woman is that Jesus had been invited for a meal by a certain man, a Pharisee, if I'm not wrong. But this sinful woman did not have a face in the community, so she just stood behind Jesus and she cried herself and she went down on her knees and just washed the feet of Jesus with, with her tears and with her hair and also, anoint, and also poured oil or a perfume on his feet. And those Pharisees asked, Ay, if this Jesus is holy, how does it not know that this woman is sinful. When, see, when the Bible says sinful, really she must have been known for what she does. She used to do it at its best. She used to give it her best, okay? So that's why it calls her sinful. And the Bible says that the Pharisees asked, or the Pharisee or the man asked, if this Jesus is holy, how does he not know that this woman is sinful? The Bible says, Jesus, Jesus said to the man that I came here and you have not washed my feet with your tears. You have not wiped my feet with oil or perfume. You have not used your hair on me, but this woman has done so. And so this woman has been fully forgiven. That woman is me. And that is why when you see me bowing down here and lying on the floor, I know what he has done for me. I am fully forgiven. And I don't stand even in front of him. I stand behind him like that woman and wash his feet from there because I'm not even worthy to stand in front of him. So I stand here not because I'm worthy. I stand here because I am not. I don't stand here. If we, if we, I don't stand here because I'm able. I stand here because I'm not. I stand here because of just his grace and his mercy. That's who I am today. And I love, I love something I had. from a certain speaker, that Jesus used out of the ordinary stories. How do you then explain a virgin God, a son? Is that not an out of, the, out of the ordinary kind of story? How do you explain Jesus using a backslider like Jonah to go and still deliver Nineveh? How do you explain that? Isn't that a God who is truly merciful? How do you explain a harlot like Rahab being a descendant of the Savior. How do you explain that? How do you explain all these stories? How do you explain how Jesus told a lame man, now stand up and go? How can a lame man stand up and live? That's the God we serve, bonus if you will. So if you're here and you feel your story is out of the ordinary, it is you that Jesus is looking for. It is you that Jesus is looking for. It's only a matter of time and Jesus is going to exalt you. Sometimes even when I'm seated, I just tend to think that there are people who are seated here faithful, faithful, and God is watching you in your faithfulness. You may not have been seen or noticed yet, but in our generation we'll sit down and say, that person used to sit in the congregation that person must have been faithful. So standing here, Usione Nikamani, you continue being faithful. It's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time. We serve a God who uses an out, out of the ordinary kind of stories. So stay there. Remain faithful. Stay at your post. Keep watching and see what God is going to do with your life. Amen. Today, my, the title of my sermon is called A Good Soldier of Christ. A good soldier of Christ, and we're going to do what the Holy Spirit is going to enable us to do. 
because of time. A soldier, a soldier serves in the army. We all know that, yes? A soldier serves in the army. And an army is a military force equipped for fighting. Sawa, sawa. We all know that. We are home. Good. We, Christians, are followers and disciples of Christ. And that qualifies us to be soldiers of Christ. Tell your neighbor you are a soldier of Christ. And if your neighbor does not believe you, Proverbs 24.10 says, If you faint in the day of adversity, trouble, battle, war, your strength is, that means you're in a war. That's why you're being told, do not faint. Because if you faint, then your strength is, that's the number one way to show you that you're in a battle. And I want us to read the book of uh, 2 Timothy 2, 1 to 13 and Ephesians 6, 10. We will start with what they will give us first. That's where we're going to reference the word today. 2 Timothy 2, 1 to 13. Amani to miangu. Good. We start with 2 Timothy 2, 1 to 3. 2, 1 to 13. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among my witnesses, commit this to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this. Hallelujah. Of this? We are in this world, but we are not of this. That he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier is you and me. Who enlisted you as a soldier? Jesus Christ. He's the commander. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. The hardworking farmer must be, uh, must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say, and may the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, of the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffer trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains, but the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying, for if we died with him, we shall live with him. If we endure, we shall reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. Ephesians 6, 10. Give me 10 to 13 first. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I like NIV says, and in the, be strong uh, in the Lord and in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Please give me NIV. Yes. Okay. We'll still use that. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against the flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. For therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians 6, give me an, just use NKJV, it's better. NKJV. Ephesians 6, 1. The Bible says, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Verse 1. Okay. Ephesians 6, 10. Oh, Ephesians 6, 10 says, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And then in 2 Timothy uh, chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Two things stand out. That first of all, as a soldier, be be, be strong. 
Then it goes ahead to say in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1, and in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Meaning there are two things that stand out, strength and grace. Now strength is the capacity to endure. It's the capacity to withstand pressure. The capacity to endure. And grace, grace is undeserved favor which has been freely given to us We've not earned it. Bonus if you were. And the served favor that has been freely given to us, we've not earned it. Okay. It is freely given to us and that is why we will stand and say, amazing grace that, the amazing grace that saved me. The saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That you did not even earn it. He just died for you and you earned it. That's grace. We say the healing grace of Christ. And that is why we can stand and say, heal me, O Lord, and I'll be healed. Save me and I'll be saved. Because there's that healing grace. We have also been justified by grace. That is why the devil cannot stand to condemn you. And therefore, the Bible says there is therefore no condemnation to those that are in Christ. Hallelujah. That is grace. So it is the undeserved favor given freely to you. You did not earn it. And some people say that favor is unmerited. My friend, favor is merited. Let me show you a little bit of that. Grace is not merited. It's undeserved and unmerited. But favor is. <laughs> Let's go to Proverbs 13, 15 very quickly. Let me just digress a bit. Good understanding gains. Good understanding. For you to get favor, you must have good. You must have what? You must have good understanding. If you remember Daniel, the Bible, uh, the, uh, if you remember that boy called Daniel, the Bible says that he had exceptional skills. That's why the King Darius wanted to even give him charge over the entire, or authority over the entire kingdom. Exceptional skills. Good understanding. He knew what he was doing. In fact, when one, one time when the king wanted to, I think this is King Nebuchadnezzar, when he wanted to to, to be, he had dreamt, he had had a, a dream. And so he wanted someone to tell, you, to tell him what the dream was and to interpret it. Dave, Daniel knew, for me to stand out and for me to gain favor with this man, for me not to die, I have to go and ask the master uh, uh, who is my God to give me understanding of what the dream was and interpret it. So you must have good understanding for you to get favor. Favor is merited. Oh, people like value. You think you'll go to an office without value and people are going to... You know, on documents, Zako. Favor is merited. Oh. It comes through honor. Honor this spirit, you know, your spiritual authority and watch favor comes from above. Favor is merited. Don't be lied to. But grace, grace is not merited. That's why you have been told, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Because now that is freely given. And so soldiers do not go to war at the expense of themselves. Here in Kenya, they are housed, they are armed. Housed, let me tell you, when a police comes, they have police camps, they are housed, they are armed. Medical expenses, that's why they have their hospitals. Unaskia, this is the forces hospital. Soldiers work at the expense of the person they are serving. And so you, a soldier of Christ, it's at the expense of Christ Jesus through his grace. Are we together? And so this grace is unmerited and we are working at the expense of Christ our Savior because he has already released the grace for it. And so it is correct to say that we are soldiers and Christ is the commander, the commander of our souls. That's why in the book of Ephesians, if you could give us Ephesians from verse 2, it says, uh, Ephesians 6, 12, sorry, I'm calling it 2 because it's, we are starting from verse 10. Uh, Ephesians, start from 11, uh, yes, 6, 11. Therefore, put on the full or the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against what? The wiles of the devil. Put on the whole armor. You cannot go to war without the armor. That's how you know you are in a battle. Put on the whole armor of God 
because you have to go out armed. When you're going out for an interview, you have to arm yourself. You go with your documents to prove that at least what you wrote on your CV is correct. So you cannot go to war without being armed. And that's why the Bible says, even spiritually, put on the whole armor of God because we're in war. In verse 13 it says, Verse 13, therefore take up the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having guarded your waist with truth. I like verse 12 because verse 12 starts by saying because we are wrestling against flesh, we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities. That's how much we are in war. Bona asifiwe. Tuko vitani. And it says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, rulers of darkness of this, of your age. That's why I'm telling you, leave your parents' prayers, let them cover you. They don't know you're struggling with depression. Kitambo wa walikuwa na gonjeka, malaria na typhoid. Squeeze watu wa gonjeki, malaria na typhoid. Squeeze the depression. Anxiety attacks, panic attacks. They don't know. Yaki kuambia na kuambia malaria na typhoid. Of this, rulers of darkness of this, they never struggled with LGBTQ. That is of this age. Pray for yourself. Problems of this age. Aja, lust of the flesh. Lust of the eyes. Pride of life. This age. That's why I said you have to wake up and pray for yourself. They do not understand. In fact, wona mwambie kwa na panic attack na kwambia kwa nini? Kwa nini wao mwenye amekutumia message amekuandikia nini? Haelewi? Haelewi hata ni exam ukifikiria wao mwalimu you just wanna nguvu inaisha. What what is panic attack? What is anxiety attack? Okay, I'm asking that and I'm a psychologist. Our parents diseases were malaria and typhoid na fever. His is a squeezing the depression. Mtu anajifungia the whole room. Nojishi dake ni nini? That's why you're being told of this. Rulers of darkness of your age. Bona asifiwe. Of your age. And so this is just to bring it to your attention that we are. We are in war. Put on the whole armor. Kazana. No one can pray for you like you can pray for yourself. You'll come to me, I'll pray for you. I'll pray for you for probably five minutes. Then I'll switch. I'll switch very fast. Very fast. You have to rise up and pray for yourself. We are in war. And I want us to consider some, let's see what, how much we'll cover, but things to consider when you're in war. Things to consider when you're in war. Na nina kuambia ukiendelea hapo kwa Biblia, na kuambia first of all you put on the truth, your waist, waist of truth, breastplate of righteousness, bwana asifiwe. Word, you have to carry your word. You have to carry your, you have to, aya. You see when Jesus went to the mountain to pray, when he finished 40 days, whom did he first encounter? Satan. So ato kiyomba bado shetani atatokea. You have to also have the word of God. That's why Jesus used it is. It is. Says your shield should be faith. Helmet salvation. And your sword should be the spirit of God. Then it says praying always in the. You have to stay in communication with the commander. If you've watched those movies you know they don't lose communication. There's one person who, in fact, is mandated to just communicate. Our kipigana yana communicate. Kwanza the the one that is after the commander. Bona asifiwe. So you can also not stay without praying. You have to keep communicating with the commander. And so some of the things to consider for our one is training. Right training. Give me Second Timothy chapter two, verse two. The Bible says, and the things you have heard from me among the many witnesses. This is Paul telling Timothy, things that you have heard from me and many witnesses. Vitu mimi nimekufunza. Vitu nimekufunza. I have trained you. 
among the things you have heard from me, uh, among many witnesses, commit this to faithful men and be able to teach others. Paul has taught Timothy. Timothy, please teach others. Bona sifiwe. Training. You have to be trained for war. Bona sifiwe. Ah, wacha ni kukaribia. You know in an army, there's classroom training and field training. But there are prior things that they have to do even before they can go into classroom training. Sawa sawa or field training. I don't know if they still do that in Kenya, but I know they shave. They shave their hairs. Shave. Sawa. In fact, someone was telling me they shave even women. I don't know if they still do that, but I know they used to. I'm saying that because my dad is a karao. Bwana sifiwe. So they shave. <laughs> do you know what shaving meant or means spiritually? Give me 1 Corinthians 11, 6. For if a woman is not covered, let, also be, let her also be shown. Shown is shaved. But, it, but if it is shameful for a woman to be shown or shaved, let her be I'm sorry for everyone that mwenye amekata nyole yake, it's out of will, nisawa, it's not an army, ati, literally, apa. But it is meant, or spiritually, it is meant to be shameful. That's why you're being told women just cover. Give me 1 Corinthians 11.15. 1 Corinthians 11.15. But if a woman has long hair, it is glory to her. For her hair is given to her. So when you go in an army and they cut your hair, where a soldier, God is removing that pride of life so that you can give him glory. The glory does not belong to you, it belongs to him. Glory is not yours, it belongs to him. Give me Jeremiah 7.29. Let me show you something. Cut off your hair and cast it and take up a lamentation on the desolate heights. For the Lord has rejected and forsaken the generation of his wrath. This is God to Judah. They had grieved God. And so God said, cut off your hair to show that you have put your pride. That you have allowed me to receive the glory. If you read the book of Acts. Acts chapter 12 from verse 21. You'll realize that. There was a king called Herod, and Herod tried to take the glory from God. The Bible says he was struck by the angel, and he died. So when you go into this army, be ready to allow him to take. A soldier could never outshine his master. A soldier could never shine his. So who you are today, you soldier. Leave it, leave it. Sometimes if you see me praying, I'm going to say, what? Mungu, mungu, mungu. Take the glory. It is not mine. Shave me how you want it. Take all the glory. Training. It's part of the training. And then you realize that you're, when you're still in training, you think you've gotten to know everything. But again, you realize that you still keep learning. You thought now getting born again and going for discipleship classes is all and coming for service and raising your hand is all. Then you start realizing that habits could be patterns. Someone tells you no pray against patterns. You don't stop learning as a soldier. No, you start praying against patterns. You start praying about against patterns. Then you realize that even names have, have meaning. The name you have. Aye. You thought you had done it all. You start praying against names. Allah. A soldier never stops learning. You're here. The training continues until the day you will die. Daniel. And his friends. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They had been taken in into the Babylonian kingdom by King Nebuchadnezzar. You all know, you all know that. But after he was taken, or after they were taken in, the qualifications were, you'll be intelligent and good-looking. They must have thought, you're training, 
na wisdom tuko tu sawa that's how we feel tumesoma sisi nimeenda niko na degree niko na degree sana hivyo i'll get all the good jobs <laughs> training continues so they have must have thought imetosha we we sema we kuingia they were told by the Isoji na mkonazo you have to change they're like i thought i'm intelligent wise good looking handsome in fact i've qualified in your land na hata misi wa babylon i'm like no 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 you're still learning change your name because you have to forget your heritage and where you come from a soldier never stops learning as if that was not enough <laughs> bible says they were even taken for an oral test with the king but for crying out loud see they had already been qualified why an oral test you never stop learning while in the army and while they were there they thought the oral test was the only thing they could do <laughs> hey from the oral test the dream now the king has dreamt in fact he's forgotten your intelligent he says you have to tell him what you what he dreamt and interpret it you keep learning you keep learning you keep daniel went to pray came with a dream and interpreted it he thought now because we are saved now we are good to go in fact nimepandishwa mamlaka huku kwa king nebukadnezar aya you have to worship this golden god again fire bona sifiwe when you're in the army you never stop you keep on doing what you keep on learning it's so hard because you not only you don't learn from good things sometimes it is through trials and it is through trials and temptations sometimes you go through things in life you wonder what what these things are you are not able to understand but be encouraged you're just learning And that is why Paul is telling Timothy, I have trained you now train others because once you have gone through those things you find people crying and you'll cry together with them because you know you can't change season but at least you need to be there for them. When they're going through similar things like what you're going through you start encouraging them because you're training them. It never stops. So you've been trained, you keep on learning while training others because in this army of Christ we have to keep We have to do what? Tell your neighbor we have to keep going. We have to keep going. Another thing you need to learn when you're in war is that you should be faithful and obedient. You can't compromise on faithfulness and obedience. A soldier must be faithful and obedient to the cause. He stands at the command of the commander, not the desires of his fellow soldiers. So the opinion of your friends do not matter. The opinion of the commander is what matters. If he says keep off, you keep off. If he says watch and pray, don't pray alone, watch too. Ukiambiwa uombe bibi unaambiwa watch and pray, wewe unaomba tu, unaomba tu and then you pick your own and watch and pray. Listen to the instructions of the commander, bwana asifiwe. Listen to the instructions of who? Be faithful. Sometimes you'll find yourself submitting to the commander when it does not make any sense at all. But for as long as it's the commander, you do it. You do what? Give me 2 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 3 to 7 there about. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this that he may please him who enlisted him as a Oh the things of the world look good excuse me Bona sifiwe The things of the world look good if you are here on a certain Wednesday we were talking about the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the pride of life because the things of the world look good but even when they look so beautiful <laughs> you are a soldier you stick to your post you have no otherwise you realize that going to the promised land without the promise of the land is no promised land 
that to you the promised land is where the promise of the land is, even when it doesn't look so beautiful. You realize that you will say like Moses in Exodus chapter 33 verse 15, that I will not go if you're not going. The promised land is good. It is refreshing. It has all things I want. But if you, the promise of the land, you're not going with me, then count me out. Because to me, the promised land is where the promise of the land is, even when it doesn't look like it. Faithful and obedient. And that is why I want you to stand and say, because I see my time is over. When we have time, we'll continue with this. It says, that's why I will let you know that you have been bought at a costly price. You have been taught by the Holy Spirit. You have been trained by experience. You have been tried by fire. You cannot sell out. You can only stay in war. It's too costly to leave it. It's too costly to walk away from the war. It's too costly to leave the commander. Oh, you have been trained by experience. You've been taught by the Holy Spirit. Been bought with a costly price of the blood of the Lamb. You've been tried by fire. Those trials and temptations are not for nothing. There's no way you can push out of the war. Tell your neighbor you have to stay. You have to stay. Let me train you. You have to? You have to stay. Refuse to quit or be defeated. Say that. You see the Bible says that we, he has supplied us with everything. To help us in all good works, bonus if you will. But you have to stand up to a point where you say, but even if I don't get anything at the end of this war, at least I will have broken even. After all, I came to the world with nothing. After all, chochote. So even if this war will end with me not having anything, but at least you'll say, welcome home, good and faithful servant. You'll say it like Job, that even though you slay me, that even though you hurt me, that even though you kill my parents, that even though I don't get married this year, yet will I trust. I am a soldier in the army of Christ. And so soldier of the army of Christ, I want you to know that Bible, the Bible is your code of conduct. Your faith, your prayer, and the word of God are your weapons. You have to stand up at your post. You have no otherwise. Stay at your post. Stay at your post. Stay at your post. And it says that it is only a matter of time. It is only a matter of time. Just hold on a little bit longer. It's only a matter of time. I'm about to come because I'm the king of glory. And all gates of heaven shall open. And I shall come up and show off with you. Stay at your post. Stay. Stay at your post. No retreat. No surrender. It's too costly to walk out, brethren. And that was it for me today. Father, we want to thank you and to bless your name. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you honor and adoration. Thank you for recruiting us into your army. We come in fully surrendered to you. Take all the glory and honor as it pleases you. Let us remain at your feet and do that which you want to do with us. But we are here to hold on until the very end. We are here to see how you're taking our out of the ordinary stories to make them your story, not our stories. To us, the promised land is where you, the promise of the land is. Keep us at our posts. Keep us at our posts. We cannot give up. We cannot be defeated. We will win this. We are more than conquerors because it's only a matter of time where you shall come, O oh God, and defend your own because we know who it is that we serve. Faithful, that even though we die, we will live together with you. We will reign together with you. And even when we are faithless, you remain faithful. We honor you and we bow down before your throne this morning. And this we pray in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.